Diffusion B just dropped an update available to y'all now. So you can train models locally, whether you want to train it on a style, a person, an object, it's all available to you. So to do that, first you want to go to GitHub. In GitHub, uh, you're going to make sure you navigate to the model that's um, 2.4.3. And with this, there's quite a few updates, bug fixes, speed increases, and a whole bunch of cool stuff. Once you've picked the model that uh, fits your computer, make sure you click that, download it, double click the installer, drag and drop the application to your applications folder. Now in Diffusion B, once you launch it, you'll see this is now an option. I'm running a model right now, so it's gonna take a little minute, but while that's happening, I can kind of explain what's the process of training. So as it says to the top left here, to train a model on your own images, you need several training images with ground truth prompts. The images could be of an object or style, Please make sure that the images are formatted properly and the prompts are accurate. It can take a few hours to train a model. So in the beta test that I did, I've tried this a few different times. I just grabbed some images off of um, Pinterest, a little cool graffiti style art. And I tried running this model previously and it took maybe close to seven to eight hours. But now the speeds increased quite a bit, but because I am running stuff, uh, my time has slowed down a bit again. I'll break down all this stuff in a second here. So before we even start worrying about any of this, we wanna make sure our images are sized properly. So get your images, make sure that they're cropped and sized to at least the 512 by 512 size. To do that, there's a few different ways. You can utilize free resources online like PhotoP, which is essentially like Photoshop, but for free and online to resize it. Or easier way is to use a service like B -I -R uh, sorry, B -I -R -M -E net. Essentially, it just allows you to batch resize an image or images. So I just dragged and dropped uh, one example in here for you. And you can see this little bounding box is like a little square. That's the 512 by 512. I have the uh, auto detect image focal point enabled so that anything within this box is basically what's going to be uh, focused on. So if you have multiple images you drag, drag in here, whether it's on, you know, like a, a pet or an object or whatever, just make sure it's within inside of this box and you should be good to go. And then after you're uh, done with that, hit save as zip and it will save it to your computer and everything should be sized properly. Clean up your images and stuff as well and make sure there's no weird like scuffs or whatever things you don't want the training to learn from in the image so everything sized properly so what's next well now's the tedious process of labeling every image <laughs> so um yeah you have your image and then you need a text document that correlates with that image so the names have to match exactly with the image so this is an image of like a little skeleton guy jumping in the air. Uh, so when you're training it on a style, as I've explained in the previous video uh, on the captioning, you want to make sure anything that you uh, want to be able to change is kind of mentioned inside of this thing. Uh, I kept everything really, really simple just for this example. Um, but let's say I had, um, well, this is a, a style I want, right? Uh, most of the images have the same kind of look. So they all have like baggy pants. They all have sneakers and stuff. So I wouldn't have that in this prompt here because those are like variables that would change. I don't want those to be things that change because I want this look. So I would exclude that from here. You do want to have whatever your image prompt is. For, so for this example, I'm using graffiti style as my image prompt. So that's going to be in all of my text documents, Im you know, graffiti style, whatever, whatever. So um, I have like, you know, Spider-Man. So for this text document, it says gra graffiti style, uh, Spider-Man with gray hoodie and sneakers. So this is telling uh, Stable Diffusion and Diffusion B when it's training on it. Hey, I want you to be able to change these things, these variables. I want you to be able to change the hoodie and because I had the word gray in there, I wanted to focus on the color. I mentioned sneakers, so I wanted to be able to change the shoes. Uh, so variables you want to be able to change are things you want to kind of incorporate in there. Um, and when it comes to like styles, you want to be really, really detailed. So if I was training it on like a person, so if I chose Spider-Man, for instance, or the example I used in the other video was Winnie the Pooh, He's like an iconic image, right? It's a bear, yellow bear with a little red shirt. 
So those things are iconic to his look. So I wouldn't really have those in there, but for a style, uh, such as the Spider-Man wearing different kind of clothes, this would be stuff I'd include in the uh, descriptors. You know, like, are they old beat up sneakers, big baggy pants, exposed socks, hands in pockets, like all these little small elements are things I would include in the descriptor. But also be mindful of the weighting. Again, if you haven't already, check out the previous video, come back to this one. You can imagine if you had multiple images, you know, I'm talking like, a hundred images or something this is going to take a long time to create each text document so i went ahead and used chat gpt and made a little uh app essentially it's a little batch uh file that will create the text it'll get you half the way there <laughs> so it'll create the text document you can label it whatever you want and you can add at least the initial image uh prompt within that text document. And I'll show you that right now. So I'll have a link to this in the description as well, but essentially it's a Python script and I have a little readme file in there. The readme file breaks it all down, uh, tells you what it does, how to use it essentially, um, but it's pretty straightforward. So what you're gonna do is drag and drop the batch text file uh, .py, it stands for Python, if you're new to this stuff drag it to your desktop and I've already done this, but I'll just replace it. It's fine. You're going to go ahead and open terminal. Uh, you can either use your little search bar or go under the apps and then utilities and click on terminal. Either way, get to terminal and we're going to make a brand new one here. So in terminal, you're going to basically just copy these two lines of script. I made it really, really, really simple for you. <laughs> so you're going to go and scroll down to where it says the reason why I dropped it, drag and dropped it to the desktop is just it's easier for me to find. So I made it like that for you guys. So you're going to copy this CD and the little um, line there and then desktop stuff. You have this little line here, <laughs> copy that, paste it into the terminal, then press enter. Then you're going to copy the next one that says this Python batch text document. All that stuff there, you're gonna copy this little line, copy, paste it in the terminal and press enter. So here's the part that's gonna save you a ton of time. So now I have a few prompts that are gonna pop up for you as it says in the descriptor here. First, you're gonna enter how many text documents do you want to create? So this correlates with how many images you have. So if you had, you know, 50 images, if you had 10 images, you have 11, 11 however many it is, we're going to create that amount of images or sorry, text documents. So for this example, um, for this data set, I had, uh, let's see, 20, what would that be? 28, 29 images. Um, so I would say, I'm just going to say 10 for this example. That's fine. So I want you to create 10 text documents. Then you're going to press enter. The next prompt is going to say, all right, uh, what's the default text for each document? So this will be your image prompt. So for this, we're just going to call this YouTube. And then the next prompt is going to say, all right, where, uh, um, what do you want to name the document? So I'm going to have you create a folder for this stuff. So what do you want to name the folder? I'm going to say like YouTube. All right, so, so far we told it how many text documents we want to make. We told it what the image prompt we want to use in the text document. And we've also told it what the document uh, folder it should be called. Next is going to have one more prompt. Where do you want to save the folder? So by default, again, I have it just as a desktop thing, just so it's easy to find. So you don't even do anything, but press enter. So now you'll have a brand new folder on your desktop. So now on my desktop, I have a folder called YouTube tutorials or YouTube, uh, what I call it, <laughs> YouTube tut. Um, so within each one of these documents, it's numbered, right? So again, I got you halfway there. So I'd recommend if you had all your images already, um, you know, fixed, sized, and labeled 
I would, you know, for example, for this, um, I think I just called this like graffiti one through like, how was it 28? So yeah, I had it, it, it was labeled as graffiti one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly how I would have this, like graffiti one, two, three, four, five. So now that that's done, it'd be labeled. It'd be the numbers would match up. So then you still have to kind of go and add the description. But again, at least part of the uh, description is done already for you. So this would be your image prompt. For this example, I just had YouTube. So in this data set, there's like this monster spray can, for example. So I had that labeled as, you know, graffiti style, monster spray can, cyclops eye, large mouth with exposed teeth. And you can go on a little further if you wanted to. You can say like the color of it. You can say little elements around it, floating particles, drooling, you know, spit out of mouth or whatever you want to add to it. Uh, but you're going to go through all of your images. Again, I tried to do as much of the heavy lifting as I could, you know, <laughs> uh, but you still have to kind of go in and add uh, the additional information there. But once that's all done, finally, <laughs> back in Diffusion V, uh, you'll choose where this information is so uh, i have my data set that's what that's what these things are called by the way this is a data set of information so it says path of data set please choose the folder containing the training images prompts the image image and prompts uh every image should have a corresponding ground truth prompt so that's the text document we're talking about here uh with the same name so that's the uh, script that i made for you so you're going to choose uh, where that's located. So I just have it on my desktop and then you're going to choose where you want your model to end up. So I just chose the same location. And then the fun part is you can choose what base model you want. So you can use the default stable diffusion, uh, that comes with this. You can use, um, essentially any model you can import into diffusion B you're going to use as your base model. So I just use one of my old ones and I'm keeping the resolution at 512. Oh yeah, by the way, that's the highest resolution you can train currently. So this would be like your your base level stable diffusion models. That's the 512 by 512. Uh, so I chose that setting. And then, um, you, of course, you want to label your model. So I just call it Graffiti version three because this is the third version I'm trying. And then training iterations. So this is, uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to experiment with this a bit and the model size, just a rough rule of thumb, uh, for like a style, for instance, you're going to take however many images you have and multiply it by like a hundred. So for this example, I had 28 images. So I multiplied by hundred, that's 2,800 iterations. So I put that there and for the model size, I just left it as the default. And as it mentions here, how large the model should be, larger model will take longer to train. So if you have it set to 128, I hope you have a pretty powerful Mac because it's going to take a while. So I don't, this thing's going to take a while and I have it set pretty low. But again, the speed has increased significantly. So the first model I trained, it was close to like eight hours. <laughs> the second model I did, uh, as he, the, uh, the creator of this app increase the speed, uh, get it down to like six hours. And for this version, I'm testing this out again, but I'm also throwing more images at it. So it kind of like offset the speed difference there, honestly. But, uh, once that's all done and you're just going to press start. And if you have everything set up correctly, everything labeled correctly, all the text documents are labeled correctly. Um, it's going to load for a quick second and then show you the amount of images you have on here. It'll make this nice little preview window, this grid window here. And then it'll tell you how much time is left. Uh, sorry, how much time per image it's going to take to um, generate, essentially, or iteration it's going to take to generate. Um, so you see the training iterations, the total number will be at the top there. And then to the left of that is how many it's gone through. So whew, I know that's a lot to say, <laughs> um, but I will have 
a link to these models that I've made so far available um, also in the description. And they're going to be specifically for Diffusion B. And that, you know, Diffusion B has its own uh, imaging or model format. So uh, if you're a Diffusion B user, these will be available to you. So again, I'll have the link to the app, the script, the uh, a few different models for you to test out. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video. Oh, yes, I almost forgot because I've left this out the last video. So my bad about that. But in addition to, you know, the speed increases and all this other stuff under the diffuse, uh, sorry, samplers now. Now there's one more sampler. There's the K-A-R-R-A-S. And this one's actually pretty cool because you can get away with some like lower step counts and still have really, really good quality uh, images. Anyway, OK, I'm wrapping this up. I'm going to go to sleep because it's like six in the morning. <laughs> all right, y'all. Um, I will talk to you all soon again. Be sure to like subscribe and uh, check out the discord because there's always some really cool tips and tricks and helpful stuff there. All right. Late.